Hey guys, I'm just about to go and train in my home gym, do some snatches, and I thought, do you know what? While I'm motivated, I could create a really cool video here that will help a lot of you guys. I'm very fortunate that I've had some really epic people help me with my snatch. I've had Zach T. Landers, strength coach, Sonny Webster, Olympian, Zach, top crossfitter, and many more people. And obviously they all snatch very differently. I've been taught different things by those people and I also still have a lot to learn and a lot of errors to fix, which I will point some out. I have two massive glaring weaknesses in my snatch at the moment and I'll explain them when we get outside. But what I've done is I've gone on my phone and I've found loads of my old snatch videos uh, as I've progressed over time. And what's really cool, or what's irritating first of is you never f save the worst ones. You always save the best ones. So all of these lifts are best case scenario of the issue I'm going to bring up like the bum rising too early, jumping forwards too much and I'm going to explain why that's happening and give you a drill that you can do to fix that if you yourself are also suffering with that. So let's get out in the garage, let's get warm because it is cold outside, the heat is already on, have some fun and hopefully I can help you guys out uh, and maybe help you get an extra few kilos and just feel more awesome about your snatch. Okay, so as I said a minute ago, I have two main problems with my snatch at the moment. So before I get warmed up and everything, I'm just gonna show you them with an empty bar. I'll get warmed up and then I'll pretty much take you through a timeline of errors that I've done and exercises that you can use to fix them and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully keep improving. The problem that I've found is I fix one thing and then I get into a new bad habit and something else comes along, uh, as you will find. Okay, so two current issues with my snatch, one of which isn't gonna change, and that's an early arm bend. So when I'm snatching with the bar, as I start to make contact with the hips, I bend the elbow, so to shift the bar up a little bit higher. It's not the end of the world. People say Rich Fronin does it, but I'm not Rich Fronin, <laughs> clearly. Um, it's not ideal. I do it to lift the bar up higher because I do have very long arms and that's how I hit my contact point. What I should do really is come a little bit narrower with my arms and snatch from my thigh and make contact on the upper thigh instead. Uh, but I spent so long doing it this way that I'm just not willing to change. So that, that's kind of the end of that. So you're gonna see an early arm bend. I've got it down to the point where it's only small now. Problem that can happen with an early arm bend is that when you're making contact, and you come off the hip, and if you bend the arms early, you make contact, if you don't keep the arms at this position, you don't keep the bar in its bar path, what happens if you make contact, and you let your arms straighten out, the bar moves away from you. That will finish with the bar finishing in front of you, or you happen to jump forward in your snatches, something I used to do, but we'll talk about jumping forward in snatches in just a moment. The other thing I do, is when I snatch, I rock backwards and forwards on my feet as I change the kind of where the weight's loaded. As I start to send the knees forwards, as I start to make triple extension, I often roll from the heels forwards and backwards. That's something that I'm working on now. So, that besides, let's get warmed up and let's go through the, the lots of issues that I've had with my snatch in the past and how you can fix them if you yourself are struggling with them. Okay, the first kind of glaring mistake that I had when I learned the snatch and happens to, I think, most people at some point is the bum rising too early. Now, there's a difference between setting up low and picking up tension when your bum rises and actually letting the bum rise too early. If you see lots of the Olympic lifters, they put themselves right down really deep in their setup position and then they kind of really embrace the back and they come up at that same angle with the back. So they might start down here get themselves loaded, but when they actually start really taking attention to the bar, their back stays in the same angle. What you'll often find is when you're setting up, in the early days, you get the weight lifted, you start lifting it, and then the bum shoots up too much, and you end up almost too far over the bar. Because the bum shut up, the legs have opened too early, and you kind of lose all your power. Once you're in this position here, like, it's a lot on the back, you've really lost the power of the legs. And one thing we're snatching a lot that I've found is, it's so much about driving through the floor with the legs. It's like a jump directly up. That's something Sonny always said to me. You're trying to jump straight up, John. You're not trying to hit the bar in front. You're trying to make contact and drive the bar straight up in the air. If your bum was rising too early, what are the, my favorite thing to use for this for a drill or seg segmented snatch deadlifts. So a snatch deadlift wouldn't be as heavy as a normal deadlift but you're gonna hold in different positions. You might hold for three seconds an inch off the floor, three seconds mid-shin, 
three seconds at knee, three seconds mid thigh, three seconds at kind of full extension. And you're gonna drill that. What that does is that makes you keep tension and it gives you time to keep that chest up through the movement so you can really feel where you should be. And also, while you're doing an isometric hold, you're really training those muscles to keep tension in those areas. Film everything you do. If you film it from the side, you can really adjust your position. Most of the stuff that I've done with my snatch personally, and like I said, is so far from being even decent. Like I'm well aware of that. This isn't me trying to be like, oh, look how good I am. It's just so far from that. It's just me showing you some of the mistakes I've made, tips that I've been given, and things that have helped me to correct those problems. I still loads, have loads of other problems, but segmented snatch deadlift is great, especially for keeping that strength with you keeping yourself over the bar. So pretty much every mistake that I've made, which I'll show you, will affect the bar path. The bar path is really important, especially in the snatch, because it's over your head, it's kind of, it's quite unstable, so if that bar isn't finishing nicely over kind of the centre line of your body, then you're going to have struggle, kind of find that hard to keep it there. If it finishes, for example, if you come down your snatch, and you're down at the bottom, and your hands are over your midline, which is hard to get there without a bar, but if they're over your midline, they're here, Lovely. If they're here, you're losing it out the front. If they're too far behind, you're losing it out the back. So we're really trying to create a kind of a good bar path. And a good bar path, I'll put a video up of what a good bar path should look like. I'll nick one of Sonny's off Instagram or something like that. But you'll see, it comes up, it might scoop in as it comes towards the shins. Then when you make that contact, it comes out a couple of inches, but then that kind of scoop, rather than going away, starts to change its directory to straight up. And then it kind of loops around at the back as you make your catch position. And if you're good, it's something I really struggle with, is your catch position will be kind of almost stacked on top of its shelf. <laughs> If you want an app that's really good for bar path, search Iron Path on the App Store or on the Google Store and you can film slow-mo your videos and you can kind of choose what kind of weight you have on the side. So it's a 20 kilo standard bumper plate, you kind of pinch it and zoom it to make it fit over and then it will track your movement and from that you will learn a lot. So the next problem I came up against, and this is something I wanted to change pretty fast because I didn't like the way it looked, and I'd like to hopefully have snatches in my eyes that eventually will look really nice and people go, irrespective of what I lift, I'm never going to be the strongest and I'm, I'm not expecting to be, but they'll go, that was a nice looking snatch. Um, and if it's going really far in front of you and you're having to jump forward to get under the bar, it tells you that something's not quite right with your bar path. And this often happens because we make too hard a contact with the hips, and really it almost wants to be more of a kind of a shove directly up, a scoop and push up with the bar. But what happens is if we're snatching and we come here and as we start to make our lift, our bar, we're not using our lats to keep the bar in close and touching our thighs almost, it comes really far away. When we make contact here and here, it's boof. And it's a big drive because there's a big hollow which the hips generate speed, they hit the bar and the bar shoots off in front. You'll know if you're doing this because if you ever catch your pubic bone and it hurts like mad, it's often because there was a big gap between the bar and your hips. If it kind of stays close to your hips, then when the kind of hips contact, if it stays close to your legs, sorry, when the hips contact it, it's not a real impact. It's more of a brush and a push. If I came from here, exaggerating, and then the bar's this far away from my legs, when I scoop under to make contact, bam, I'm gonna hit hard. Whereas if I come here, and I'm in contact with the thighs, when I scoop under with my legs and I make contact, it's more, of a, it's more of a brush and a kiss rather than a punch. So that's one thing that I noticed a lot when I was jumping forwards. So what I had to do with that is I had to learn to use my lats a lot more and keep that bar nice and close to my thighs. Again, Instagram, oh, not Instagram, Iron Path, using Iron Path will show you the movement of this. My favourite exercise to fix this is the muscle snatch. So the muscle snatch is basically snatching, really concentrating on that triple extension to get, which is basically on your tippy toes, locked legs, bum squeeze so your hips are in line with the rest of your body. And what that does by using muscle snatch here is you have to generate all that power from there. And if the bar goes too far in front of you, you're not going to be able to get it above your head because you're really, there's no give here, you're just directly upright. It looks like this.
So upon editing this video, I just want to add one thing in here. The reason I love the muscle snatch for this movement is because you can't jump forwards or back to compensate for your bar path. You really have to get more efficient at getting the bar to go straight up because you can't jump forwards and backwards and you can't make a press from out here. If you do a muscle snatch and it comes to here, it's close to you, you can kind of get a bit of a push on it. You can't if that's too far away from you. Another awesome exercise for this would be like a no foot snatch where basically you do a snatch but you don't move your feet. So you, you can't jump forwards or backwards, so you're gonna be forced to make the bar path go more straight or less loopy so it doesn't go in front of you or doesn't finish behind you so it finishes in the correct position. On top of that, you could then take away the hook grip. You could do a no foot snatch with no hook grip, which means then when you make hip contact, if your problem like mine is that you put too much force through the hips, it's not so much that the bar moves away from your legs, then we need to change the way you do that. And if you lose the hook grip, you can't then put as much power through your hips because the bar will fly away from from you it'll come out of your grip so what that forces you to do is to change the angle uh, of that bar path again so it can't sweep so far away from you and you have to make your trajectory trajectory go more upright opposed to further away just wanted to add that in back to the video so muscle snatch a wicked exercise especially if you're someone who struggles to get that triple extension it's not something I personally struggle with but I think most people tend to is when they're doing their lift they don't get triple extension they might go here they extend off here, but the hips aren't forwards. So they do the snatch, they're like, boof, or they're clean and they get under it without really hitting this position here. So we're really looking to try and get those hips engaged and stand nice and tall. Muscle snatch is great for making that happen. Because what we're trying to do, remember, when we make that kind of hip scoop, that hip contact, is drive the bar upright and jump up with the bar. I did a really cool drill with Zach Tealand on the video that we did with him before. And we set like a 20 kilo plate either side of our feet in our setup for the snatch. Sure, we had to go a little bit closer with our, with our stance to set up. But basically, we'd get the bar, we'd complete a snatch, and we'd jump up and separate our feet on top of the plates. So you jump from in between a plate onto two plates. That shows that you've jumped up in the air. That's another bad habit I've got into. Because of the problems I was having with my knees, I was always looking at how my stance was when I finished my squat because I kept jumping one leg back further than the other. Do you see when I finished that lift? And I bet, annoyingly, on every other lift I've done this video, I've looked down at the ground afterwards. Find a place, look forwards at it, stay looking at that spot. Don't look down at your feet until your lift's finished. <laughs> By no means have I got like a strong snatch. Like I think when, when people start hitting over 100, I'm like, wow, they're, they're really good at snatching. I'm not there. I got like a 91 kilo snatch. Um, but one thing that I found that helped me progress was um, rather than always going in and trying to hit your one RM or try and get a new PB, to go for things that build consistency, build confidence and build technique and then maybe try a one RM or a two RM every so often. Um, because it's better to consistently do good and get better than it is to do crap loads of time and have one off good session. Um, we wanna kind of reinforce those kind of really cool movement patterns and one thing I like to do is do like a snatch pull or snatch high pull and then a snatch. So basically you're trying to kind of enforce that kind of movement where you come up with a nice vertical bar, big shrug, bar comes down and then you hit your snatch. Uh, it's a little bit more volume in a session because it's two kind of pulls back to back so you're gonna get some benefits from the kind of stamina and conditioning in that front but also you're gonna learn to snatch under a little bit more fatigue rather than having five minute break coming in doing another snatch five minute break this time you're putting two exercises back to back one that hopefully makes the first one hopefully reinforces that pattern so when you do the second snatch you kind of remember what you did to make it look very similar and for the bath to move in the same bar path as it did for the pull if that makes you sensey. There you have it guys, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I hope this helped you. Again, like I said, there's some really amazing people that put out so much kind of Olympic lifting stuff uh, at a very much higher level than what I did today. I recommend you go and follow Zach T. Lander. I was lucky enough to train with Zach once uh, and I watched a lot of his videos, they're great. Uh, this was more from my anecdotal experience uh, and I'm sure it will help a lot of you guys and I really hope it does. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, hit that notification bell and any questions you have leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to reply to them for you. Thanks guys.